All right. In the previous lecture, we defined the well quasi ordering. So quasi order is well quasi ordering if it's well founded and has no infinite anti chain. So something is well founded if it has no strictly no infinite sequence that is strictly descending. And then uh, anti chain is a set of pairwise non incompatible. Uh, I mean set in which no two pairs are compatible, right? And we proved that uh, a quasi order is well quasi ordering if and only if for every, for every infinite sequence uh, you must have an infinite subsequence that is increasing. Yes. So we use infinite Ramsey theorem to prove it. All right, so uh, today we start by showing you several constructions how to construct a well quasi ordering or well quasi order. So constructions. Well quasi ordered sets. So let Q1, Q2 be well quasi orders. Now, first one is called the disjoint union. If Q1 intersection Q2 is empty, then uh, let Q be the union of these two, and this order, so X is less than equal to Y if and only if uh, X, Y are both in Q1 and x is less than equal to y or x y are both in q2 and x is less than equal to y in the second relations then let's define this way then q with this ordering is a well quasi order why Why is this the case? Now we can use this theorem, right? So let me show you the proof so that you can imagine, right? So uh, suppose that then there okay. Uh, So I should okay. Let, let me <laughs> let me just use so let a one, a two, a three, b n infinite sequence of elements in Q. Then. Uh, it contains an infinite subsequence of elements from QI for some I. Right? Because you have only uh, two sets, right? Q1 and Q2. Every element either belongs to Q1 or Q2. So by Pisano principle, um, at least half of them, <laughs> but it's an infinite sequence, we cannot say half. Uh, either Q1 appears infinitely many times or Q2 appears infinitely many times. And we have, our goal is to find an infinite subsequence that is increasing, right? or in some pair 
that is compatible. Now uh, we may assume I mean this typically we do something like this. We may assume that AI AJ is QI for all J by taking a subsequence. Typically whenever we prove well cause ordering, uh, we take a subsequence without ruining every anything because what we care is to find the infinite subsequence. So as long as we find an infinite subsequence and still continue and finding a sub infinite subsequence of infinite subsequence, then that's still an infinite subsequence of original sequence. So it's okay to take an infinite subsequence and continue proving it. So we can assume easily that AJ, all AJ, all A1, A2, A3, everything is from QI, just by deleting all others, because our goal is to find the subsequence. Then since QI is well quasi ordered by this thing. There is, uh, I have used that I and J. Okay, so a pair K and L such that uh, Q A K is less, less than A L. Now, I don't have, but uh, let's look at this second property to prove where goes other also this is enough right for every sequence you have a pair that so this implies here the, this implies the a a k is less than or equal to a l so thus q is l well, quasi ordering. Okay, so that's the proof. So this joint union is well quasi order. Now, what about the second one? Second one is product. This product. So let Q be the Q1 times Q2, and X1, Y1 is less than equal to X2, Y2, if and on if X1 is less than equal to X2 in the first relation, and Y1 is less than equal to Y2 in the second relation. All right. Then we claim that Q with this thing is a well quasi order. Oh yeah, I keep writing well quasi order or well quasi order ring. Uh, it doesn't matter. All right. So why is this well quasi order? Again, we just use this lemma, right? That's important characterization, yeah, right? So suppose x1, y1, x2, y2 uh, it, right? And uh, so we suppose this is an infinite sequence. Of Q. Now, uh, since Q1 is Q1 is well quasi ordered by this order uh, X1, X2 this has an infinite subsequence. Uh, 
right? Now, uh, and then y i one, y i two has another infinite sequence. xj1 okay well how should i say x y i j1 y i j2 y i j3 right then x i j1 uh, y i j1 is less than or equal to x i j2 y i j 2 right so that's it so if you you see that uh, in this well called journaling proof it's quite common that you have subscript of subscript i mean it, it, these subscripts could nest, could be nested a lot so what's more convenient is to say uh, since x1, xi's have an uh, infinite subsequence, we may assume, so here typically we write, aha, we may assume that x1, x2, x2, x3, x4, this is increasing sequence. And then we can also assume that y1, y2, y3 is an increasing subsequence by taking subsequence. And then uh, this sequence itself is increasing in q, so therefore it's well quadrilateral. All right, so now we have seen two things. So disjoint union and the product. Now, what could be more general? Uh, oh, maybe I should say examples. Right, so for instance, set of positive integers. This is a well called ordering. Right, it's well bounded and has no infinite anti chain. And uh, by the previous theorem, when you take a product of them, then this is again well called ordering, right? Now, It says, right, so uh, here in the set of positive integers, the anti chains have size at most one. You don't have anti chain of size two. Now let's look at this. There's a set of points here, right? Note that you have arbitrary large anti chains. Right? So these points represent some number, right? Pair of numbers, and they form an anti chain. So in this case, you don't have an explicit bound on the size of anti chain. And yet, there is no infinite anti-chain. Why? Of course, of course this is true because of the proof that we have. Because this is well called ordering, so it has no infinite anti-chain. If you want to see directly, now pick one point inside the set. Now all other points either has smaller x values, so over here, or has uh, bigger y values. Smaller x values, and each x coordinate, you can have at most one of them. And for each y coordinate, you can have at most one of them. Right? So as soon as you have a point x and y, the number of distinct points you can have is x minus 1 plus y minus 1 plus 1. Right? And this is finite. So you see that even proving the, uh, this is a record is not 
trivial if you just use the definitions. In a sense, right? You, you pick something, you pick some points, and then uh, you have to argue why. And our theorem actually continues, right? So you can have like n uh, to the hundred, let's say, n to the three, right? We say xi, x1, y1, g1 is less than or equal to x2, y2, g2, if and only if x1 is less than x2, y1 is less than y2, This is again very cordial ring by our proof. Now you can imagine how we're going to prove it has finite anti chain. It requires something, right? <laughs> if you want to prove it directly. All right. So our theorem shows that this has finite anti chain. All the anti chains are finite. Now, now think of this n union, n square union, n cubed union, n to the four union. What is this? This is sequence of lengths one, sequence of lengths two, sequence of lengths three, sequence of lengths four, etc. So let's let me write it as n to the less than omega omega not w omega so this is set of all finite sequences of n more generally uh, for q let q less than omega be this Oh yeah, I should include that. Uh, okay, n to the zero. What is it? n to the zero, something like empty. So it's a uh, length zero sequence. So let's say q to the i, where i is from zero to infinity. Okay. Now, uh, our if we just use this joint union and the product, then this is not a well called ordering, right? If let's say you you can only compare sequences of same lengths, then I can have a. Uh, uh, sequence of lengths 1, sequence of lengths 2, sequence of lengths 3, sequence of lengths 4, this will be an anti chain. So I want to introduce a new ordering. So we say A1, A2, A, M is less than or equal to B1, B2, B, N. If and only if, first of all, less of length is length of first was first sequence is most length of the second sequence, and there is a subsequence. Bi one, bi two, bi m of b1, b2, bn, so where i1 is less than i2, is less than i3, is less than im, such that uh, a1 is less than or equal to a uh, bi1, a2 is less than or equal to bi2, a3 is less than or equal to bi3, a m is less than or equal to b i m okay then we say that the first sequence is less than or equal to second sequence okay so this is so for instance two 
five seven is less than uh, one three four one uh, four five eight because I can map two to three and five to five uh, eight to eight seven to eight Now, in this new ordering, again, uh, it's very close to ordering. So, theorem. This is commonly called Higman's lemma. If Q is a very close ordering, then This thing, let me say this is where quasi ordered by the Higman ordering. So let me write this as a Higman ordering. So this is uh, in 1952. All right. So you've seen the uh, technique for the our proof for the product case. Now this is more general, right? We have a we have to make a product infinitely many times. How how does this go, right? Suppose not, then Q this this set of infinite sequence set of finite sequences has a, a bad sequence. So what is bad? Bad means count example, so no infinite subsequence is increasing okay so that's a count example that prevents us to prove that something is very quasi ordering remember something is very quasi ordering if and only if it has an infinite subsequence that is increasing all right now so uh, let x1, x2 be a bad sequence. x1 is a x11, x12, x13, x1, n1, x2 is x21, x22, x23 x2 and 2 x3 v x3 1 x3 2 x3 3 x3 and 3 da, 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 da. xn is xn1 xn2 xn no n is not a good idea let's let's call i I two I three X I N I. So that's a that's a, our sequence. Now, among all bad sequences, choose one. So we may assume. We chose the one that n one is minimum, right? 
we know that there exists one, at least one bad sequence. Each bad sequence, you have n1, the, the length of the first entry. And I'm going to choose the bad sequence that n1 is minimum. So let y1 be the x1. Now, among all bad sequences x1, x2, starting with uh, y1, we choose the to we choose one such that n2 is minimum. Okay? What does that mean? I'm, I'm going to assume that in the choice of x, this, this bad sequence, I'm going to choose the one that starts with the y1, and the second one has as short as possible. So it's kind of dictionary order. Right? So that let y2 be x2. Now we continue. Among all bad sequences, x1, x2, starting with the y1, y2, yi, we may assume that x, uh, uh, we may assume that uh, x is chosen to minimize n i plus 1. Then let y i plus 1 to be x i plus 1 of that bad sequence. Right? So for each i, I can Right, so what we know, so for each i, we know that there is a bad sequence starting with the y1, y2, yy. That's our assumption. Okay, now, uh, the first claim is actually easy claim, y1 by 2, y3. This infinite sequence is also bad. Why? Because it, it contains... Right? <laughs> If not, then yi is less than equal to yj for some i less than equal to j. But that's a contradiction. Contradiction because there is a bad sequence. Starting with y1, y2, up to yj, right? So, no two of these things will be comparable. I mean, nothing is, like, nothing it comes before is less than equal to something that comes later. Remember? Because of that. Yeah, so if if not, there is uh, some pair because of yeah. 
if not, then it's not, uh, then it's, right. So something is bad if no two pairs are compatible, right? <laughs> Am I doing all right? Yeah, this is okay. So, mm, yeah, maybe, maybe let me add a remark. So we define no bad as a no infinite subsequence is increasing, but that's oops, that is actually equivalent to say that uh, like x i is less never x x s i is never less than x j for all i less than j. This is because of this observation. Because of that observation, uh, no infinite subsequence is increasing the same as x i is less than or equal to x j. Yeah. All right. So that's contradiction. All right. So this sequence is bad. Now. Uh, let's look at the first entries of uh, oh so that means therefore we may assume x1 is equal to xi is equal to yi for all i Right, because that's one bad sequence. Now, okay, I mean, I don't have to say that. <laughs> let's, let's not say. So why, why I with the first entry of why I? Oh, I should say that trivially each yi has length at least one because if it's length zero, then it's less than or equal to anything behind. So then why y1, y2, this has an infinite increasing subsequence. Y I one, Y I two, Y I three, right? Because Q is a well quadrilateral. Now here's what, here's the thing. So you have a sequences like y i one, right? So this is y one, y two, y three, y i, and then oh y i one, and then it jump to y i two. Y i three. Right now, let G one be Y one, G two be Y two, and G I one minus one to be Y I one minus one, and G I one to be Y. I one minus first term. G I one plus one be Y I 
2 minus first term. gi 1 plus 2 byi 3 minus first term. So what I mean is, I take this as my g1, g2, and gi1 minus 1, and this is my gi1, gi2, no, not i2, gi1 plus 1, and gi1 plus 2, okay? Now I constructed a new sequence. Now, I claim that this is bad. Why? Okay, let me, let me just simplify. Uh, I, I keep coming back. So let's say definition of bad. Let me clarify that. Uh, there's no i less than j such that like xi is less than equal to xj. Okay? Then it's bad. So that is not very quadrilateral. Now let's compare claim 2, g1, g2. This is bad. Why? First of all, gi is not gj if both i j are less than or equal to no less than i1 because when you pick any two elements here there used to be a part of bad sequence so no two is compatible right so over here, you don't have a compatible pair. And gi is not less than equal to gj if both of them are bigger than i1 because if so, for instance, if this is less than equal to that, then you can compare these two, right? This is less than equal to that, so this whole thing will be less than equal to that because otherwise like why i uh, now <laughs> why what is it why i oh yeah this is another i otherwise some okay let me just say why a is less than equal to yb for some a less than b okay so no two below will be compatible. Now let's see what happens if we pick one here, one there. Well, that's okay because of the definition of uh, Higman ordering, right? If this is less than equal to that, then it's fine because I can ignore this. So why, again, y of something is less than equal to y of something, but that's contradiction to the bad. So this is easy, but this contradict. The choice of gi1, no, those two choice of yi1. Because when we choose a bad sequence, we chose the one that has shortest length, starting with something. Right? So when we choose the, the one, so yi1 is chosen to minimize ni1 among all bad sequences. starting with the y1, y2, yi1 minus 1, right? Now we found uh, something that is one shorter. Length is one shorter because we, we removed one. 
All right, so that's, that's the proof. That's the proof of the Higgman's lemma. Maybe confusing, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this is basis of the whole many, many proofs in this field. Now the next theorem we're going to show you is the Kruskal's theorem. So we say H is a topological minor, remember, if uh, G contains a subgraph that is I small pick to a subdivision of H. Then this is theorem to, to Kruskal in 1960s. Trees are well quasi ordered by the topological minor. So in other words, if you have an infinite sequence of trees, then one is a topological minor of another. There is a pair i and j such that i is less than j and ti, the i tree is sub is topological minor of tj. So you can embed you can embed the i tree into j tree. And the proof this proof is due to Nash Williams. We prove a stronger statement. Sometimes it's easier to prove a stronger statement. So tree is rooted. Tree with uh, one specified root, specified Vertex called the root, so then we call it a rooted tree such that every edge is oriented towards the root. And then uh, we say t prime is less than equal to t for two rooted trees if uh, If the each edge, okay, how do I say precisely? If T has a subgraph, isomorphic to a subdivision of T prime where preserving orientation direction of each edge right so if i have a 
this edge, it's okay to be like this. So we want to make it harder right, to be uh, to satisfy these relations. Okay. Now the proof is as follows. So claim is rooted trees. Are well quasi ordered by this. So if not, then there is a bad sequence T one uh, T two da da da. Now. Um, <laughs> choose t1 so that uh, number of vertices of t1 is minimum okay choose ti so that among all better sequences uh, starting with t1, t2, ti minus 1, number of vertices of ti is minimum. Then uh, if I want to be really precise, I can say, okay, there's t, each ti, let's say each ti is ui, and then we have sequence u1, u2, u3, and has the, which has the property that there is a bad sequence for any i. There is bad sequence starting with u1, u2, ui, and then uh, by the assumption this sequence of u's is already a bad sequence, and then it minimizes the length, and therefore we can assume that t1 is equal to u1, t2 is equal to u2, etc. But uh, but that process, I can say, does. Uh, yeah, okay easy to see that t1 t2 is bad all right now let bi be the set of components of ti minus root Right, Ti has one vertex that is specified. So this is T1, T2, T3, etc. So what is B1? So this is B1, B2, B3, right? So B1 is set of all these three trees, B2 is set of these three trees, B3 is set of these two trees, etc. Now let S be the union of all Bi's. Since S uh, now the claim is I mean if this is well called others by our relation then the S the sequence of elements of final sequence of elements of S is also well called others. By the Higman ordering. This is due to Higman's lemma. So what does that mean? That means so there is I okay. There are I and J such that 
bi is less than bj, right? So what does that mean? So this is bi, this is bj, and this is tree, some tree, some tree, some tree. And I can embed this over here and embed that over here. Now, now this is the place where I use root tree. Because I use table root and every edge is oriented towards the root. And since we follow this orientation, we can combine these two these two ori embeddings because all the path is oriented towards the root. So I can I can glue these things together. And win. Alright? So we can, I mean we don't Of course there are places so root can be I mean I didn't require that root is mapped to root because it's possible that uh, bi has only one leaf and no am I doing alright? <laughs> Oh, actually, it's okay. Yeah, root is mapped to root. That's fine. Oh, no, no. Actually, if you have a single vertex. Oh, no, it's okay. It's okay. I think it's okay. Yeah. So this root, I map this root to the root. Mm. I mean, this part of the proof is okay, but maybe not. Not in general, because later we will see that the root cannot be preserved, probably. All right. So, so in this case, uh, t we can we see that t i is less than equal to t j. Contradiction to the fact that the Transition to the bed. So, therefore, we may assume S is not record ordered by this ordering, the Higman ordering. So, S contains a bad sequence. S1, S2, right? And then SI, let's say SI is a subtree. A size, let's say B AI for some AI, right. and we may assume that A one is less than A two less than A three by taking a subsequence, right? Because uh, that sequence is infinite, so I can eliminate. Right. You have a bad sequence. You have a sequence out of elements, and I can assume that it has been taken in the increasing order because you only have finitely many things in before, right? Right. So, for instance, if S one is from uh, B ten, now B ten, B one up to B ten has only finitely many trees. <clears throat> Since infinite sequence, this bad sequence is infinite and has no, nothing appears twice, 
you can eliminate them and then uh, see that uh, you can just delete all of them then all the others will come from B11 or later right so therefore we can assume that this is increasing subsequence now what we do is now consider Uh, T1, T2 up to TA1 minus 1 and then S1, S2 and this this is a bad sequence why? because no two of them in the previous parts are compatible because T was bad sequence. If any two of them was compatible, but this was a bad sequence as well, right? <clears throat> so no two of them will be compatible. What about these two? If this is com contained inside here, then here's the place where I move the root, right? Then uh, again, this is a sub subtree of some T something, T A J, right? So that's a contradiction. Now that means this contradicts the choice of SI. S1 is smaller than T AI contradicting the choice of uh, A. Not T A I T A one, right? So that's a contradiction. So that proves that uh, trees are well coordinated. Right? Rooted trees are well coordinated by these relations. Now you will see that. Uh, graphs are not records ordered by many relations so let me give you for example by subgraphs why because we have infinite end chain how about topological miners The number because I give you I probably give you this as a homework. Okay. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for today. <laughs>